Hello everyone. Let us discuss what is a piezoelectric oscillator. Before we start, let us have a quick recap about the basic block diagram of any oscillator. The first component is a tank circuit. What is a tank circuit? The parallel combination of inductor and a capacitor. What is the role of a tank circuit to produce the AC wave? The output of a tank circuit is given to the transistor which will act like an amplifier. So the role of transistor is to amplify the given signal. The third component is a feedback circuit. Now what is the role of a feedback circuit? Feedback circuit will feed some part of the output back to the input of a tank circuit. So as to obtain the, an output of constant amplitude or a constant power. That is the role played by a feedback circuit. Now let us implement all these three blocks in our regular circuit ok so let us see where is a tank circuit as we all can see here we have a capacitor ok let us place one coil in parallel with the capacitor and let me call the coil as L1 and the capacitor as C so here we have a parallel combination of inductor coil L1 and capacitor C we require a variable capacitor so that we can set the capacity to the required value. The frequency of this tank circuit is given by the equation F is equal to 1 divided 2 pi into square root of L1 multiplied by C. Your L1 is constant, so you can change the value of C so as to obtain the frequency above 20 kilohertz. Now let us start with the working of the circuit. Initially, we will press a switch S. The moment we press the switch S, the battery gets connected in the circuit. Now the capacitor gets charged. Okay? This graph explains the charging process of a capacitor. Okay? And from here to here, we have the time of charging of a capacitor. Once the capacitor is fully charged, after that, the discharging of capacitor will start. The discharging of capacitor C will take place through the inductor coil L1. Okay? And the discharging curve will be like this. From here to here, we have the time of discharge of capacitor C. Now, when the capacitor C is getting discharged, an AC current will flow through the coil L1. So, the current flowing through the coil L1 is a variable current that is the alternating current AC. Due to the flow of AC current, a variable magnetic field is produced in the surrounding region of L1. Okay? On the top of L1, we all can see that there is one more coil. Let us call this coil as L2. Now the coil L2 is placed in the changing magnetic field of L1. Once again, the coil L2 is placed in the changing magnetic field of L1. So, the flux associated with the coil L2 is changing and according to the Faraday law, due to the change in flux, an EMF is induced in the coil L2 due to which an induced current will flow through coil L2. Now, this induced current will be again AC in nature. What do you mean by AC? Alternating in nature. So, for a particular instant of time, plate P1 will be positive, plate P2 will be negative. After a certain interval, they will interchange their polarities. Okay, so plate P1 will become negative and P2 will become positive. So what we all can notice, the polarities of P1 and P2s are getting interchanged after the fixed interval of time. And that frequency of interchange depends Okay, upon the frequency of the tank circuit, which is calculated by using the form 1 upon 2 pi square root L1C. Okay, so here we can notice an inverse piezoelectric effect. We are changing the polarities of P1 and P2. As a result, the mechanical vibrations of this quartz crystal, the mechanical vibrations of this quartz crystal will start along the vertical axis. The frequency of the vibration of the cord crystal will be exactly equal to the frequency of the tank circuit. Now since the frequency of the tank circuit we have set it about 20 kilohertz, 
the frequency of vibration of the quartz crystal will also be about 20 kilohertz and as a result the surrounding air molecules will also start vibrating with the same frequency about 20 kilohertz so we can say that the ultrasonic waves are generated in the surrounding region okay now we require one more coil in the circuit okay so what is the role of the third coil L3? This third coil L3 is going to act like a feedback circuit. See how the changing magnetic field of L1 is coupled with L2. Okay, now L2 will carry an induced current. Okay, now due to that induced current also a magnetic field of L2 is produced. And in the magnetic field of L2 we are placing the coil L3. So, now here the flux associated with L3 is also changing and due to the change in the flux an EMF is induced in the coil L3. Now this EMF is induced because of changing current of L2. Okay, so now EMF is induced in L3 as a result the induced current will flow through L3 and that induced current is now given to the base of an NPN transistor. Now what is the role of the NPN transistor? This NPN transistor will act like transistor amplifier which is the second requirement of a tank circuit. Okay, here we require a current meter to measure a current. Okay, the emitter terminal of a tank circuit is grounded okay, for the safety of the transistor. So this is emitter terminal. This is a base terminal and this is a collector terminal of a transistor. So here we have a symbol of a transistor. Now, what is the role of a transistor? The input received by the transistor is amplified and that amplified signal is given back to the tank circuit. So the vibrations of a tank circuit are now sustained. This is how one loop is completed. The process will repeat. And in every repetition, the quartz crystal is going to vibrate with the frequencies about 20 kilohertz and the surrounding air molecules will also vibrate with the same frequency. This is how ultrasonic waves are generated by using a piezoelectric oscillator. Repeat. Thank you.